Okay, we will call this um, agenda and priorities meeting to order for February the 21st. And I will have Councillor Wing read the land acknowledgement. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Barkley. The town of Innisfail acknowledges that we are meeting on Treaty 7 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Kainai, Pakani, and Siksika, as well as the Tsutina First Nation and Stony Nakoda First Nation. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to, tho to those whose territory we reside on. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wing. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Yes, Mayor Berkeley, uh, under 8.3 in camera um, operational scan, MGA section 197.2 and the Freedom of Information Privacy Act uh, 24. Uh, one G, please. Okay, thank you. Could I please have someone uh, make a motion to adopt the agenda I'll, as amended? I'll move the agenda as amended. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bates. All in favor? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and we will go to 3.1, and I'll invite Karen Scarlett to please come forward to the um, desk here. And I'd also like to welcome everyone in the gallery today. Thanks for coming. There. Thank you for having me today to talk about public sculpture for Innisfail. My name is Karen Scarlett. I grew up in Innisfail, west of town on the Little Red Deer Road. My great-grandparents homesteaded on the same farm I grew up on, and my great-great-grandparents homesteaded on a farm just across the road from them. So my family's been here for a long time. Uh, Last summer, I had the pleasure of leading the welcoming and inclusive mural that was put onto the coffee cottage. We had more than 200 volunteers come out and help with over 600 volunteer hours included in our project. And that experience has uh, made me feel like I need to move home. So I'm coming. I've joined the art club. I've joined the Legion. I plan on joining the historical village board. Uh, I have a few different things that I hope to do as when I come to town. Uh, today I'd like to speak to you about public art, more specifically sculptural art, and more specifically a robust public art policy. Uh, next slide. Last summer I had the pleasure of meeting uh, the guys from the parks group, and I talked to them about this elevator and their plans for more elevators in town. I thought, isn't this a perfect public sculpture to have that actually is useful in town? Um, I asked them if they would mind if I included some history about grain elevators and started creating a Google map that the town could use to talk about our public art. Today I'd like to highlight a few families that I think are important. They're not the most important people in town, uh, but they're just individuals and organizations that I think are important and are easily thought about when you, when you talk about Innisfil. If I'm traveling anywhere and I say I'm from Innisfil, Alberta, I often get asked if I know the Llewellyns or if I know the Danes family, excuse me, or if I know the Jacksons. Very, very well-known families in town. So like I said, this is not a complete list, it's just a starting point and some ideas that I thought would, be make, would make some good public art. So our next slide is the Danes family. So Danes family has been involved in all kinds of things in town. Of course, they've got the Pro Rodeo, which started off as the, what was the beginning? Rodeo. Little, little Bridges Rodeo. For years it was a Little Bridges Rodeo and that co coincided with our parade and brought lots of people to town to do lots of things. Uh, they have the auction mart and Ivan Danes of course was our famous country crooner who traveled and sang all over the place. <coughs> I don't know how much money my parents spent at Danes Fashion Boutique. <laughs> all kinds of fancy but fancy jeans from their store. Uh, they've been involved in the economic development of Innisfil for decades. They originally came to town and they were the blacksmiths. And I remember when Grandpa was involved in moving their blacksmith building to the historical village. The large sculpture that's shown in this picture is a very popular sculpture that appears in, in, in Calgary on 8th Avenue Mall. It's a Clydesdale or Bergeron, and it's made of all kinds of farm memorabilia, all welded together. 
I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a Danes sculpture that was full of all kinds of memorabilia from the different things that they've been involved in in our town and made in a style of a bucking bronco. The picture on the left is uh, from when Jack Danes won the Calgary Stampede bucking bronco competition at the Calgary Stampede in 1956. Uh, I have brought a piece of art that I've done of the Danes family to be included in the town civic art collection. Hopefully it'll hang on the walls here. Next slide. Is the Buttermakers of Innisfail. So the Jacksons landed into Markerville first and that became the hub of the dairy industry in Alberta in the early 1900s and then they came to Innisfail and set up shop here and where they came economic uh, activity followed. So the creamery where we did the mural last year became a hub for farmers to come and bring their cream and their milk uh, on a daily or every other day event. Uh, since they were the butter makers, the Jacksons have been integral in all kinds of economic activity in, in Innisfil. So from the creamery they had the drugstore, uh, they've done flowers and landscaping, the ice cream shop, both Shooter Magoo's and Alley Scoops, as well as the gift loft. And that may not be a full inclusive list of things that they have done. Next slide. So I thought, because they're the butter makers, wouldn't it be fun to have a sculpture of Granddad Jackson made up of butter slabs? It was a quirky and fun little piece. I've brought this piece of art to be joined in the civic art collection for the town to have. Uh, next slide. So uh, this slide's going to be hard to get through. Uh, I became friends with Craig and Jared Llewellyn when I was a kid. Um, uh, Chris Llewellyn and I had a conversation a couple weeks ago, and I asked her how she could possibly let her kids ski in that slough where they skied. And we had a little laugh because she told Dawn that she wasn't letting her kids touch that water because it was so disgusting. So uh, I remember how bad it was, and I remember it didn't seem like very long after the provincial water ski tournament was held here, and it was so exciting, and there were so many people in the water. And then the national competition came, and that was exciting and awesome, too. Um, I actually have a proposal about the space around Dodds Lake that when I was a kid, I remember you couldn't really see the lake. There was bushes and trees and there was all kinds of things everywhere. There was not a boardwalk, there was no green space. And there wasn't really any space for people to gather. And so now it's become this beautiful spot and I think it's really due to Don being feisty, <laughs> dumping his kids in a slough and Chris starting the activity to clean up the lake and, and turn it, start what has turned into a beautiful space for families to gather. In 1980, I remember being at the southeast end of the elementary school where all the grade five, six kids gathered and we were the cool kids. And skateboarding had become something, just had become something. And there was about five or six kids that had skateboards. We would uh, skate down the ramp at the far end of the school. Most of the people bailed after two or three feet because it was pretty steep pitch. The rest of them, they did the bottom, hit the compression, and they would explode and not make it any further. But then there was Craig. And Craig could ride the, ride the walk and hit the compression, and he could do tri tricks, flip his skateboard, do 360s, and make it look like it was something of ease. And uh, when I went home and told Teresa about, my little sister, about how amazing Craig was, she said her, his little brother was the same. They always raised the level of how everybody interacted. And it wasn't long till they started traveling half the year and they'd be gone in the winter to practice skiing in Florida. But when they came back, they showed up with no ego and kindness and friendship. And it was like the rising, tides, rising tide raised all boats. Last summer when I was doing the mural, I decided I'd go and check out the skateboard park because I was 
very interested in what it looked like. And I had heard that, that you had uh, hired a young boy to make sure everybody was included and there was, there was friendship and no competition. And within being at the park for about a minute, I had about six kids around me wondering who I was and what I was doing and if I was gonna skate with them and why I was there. <laughs> and I thought, wow, the kid you've hired has done his job. The, the little kids came running over and wanted to know how they could be included and how I could be part of what they were doing. And that experience made me feel like Craig and Jared had showed up completely and totally. And uh, the most passionate proposal I have today is that I would like to see, next slide please, a sculpture close to the skateboard park of Don, Craig and Jared in their fine form skating, skiing. Um, and I would love, love to see the skateboard park named the Craig and Jared Friendship and Sportsmanship Skate Park. And maybe we could convince Jared to come back with his son and do a demo because uh, not only is Jared an amazing skier and sportsman, his son is also a world-class athlete as well. Um, their entire lives, both Craig and Jared and Jared's son, Dorian, have always listed Innisfil as their hometown. They have all skied for Canada in the Olympics. Jared has carried the flag. And they've always been so proud of our town and done us incredible justice. Oof, that was hard. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Larry Robinson is a Canadian legend. He has won the world calf roping uh, title seven times. He's won the Canadian calf roping champion six times. He continues to train youth in calf roping and rodeo sport. Even his horses have been named to the Hall of Fame. Uh, next. Next slide. He is royalty. Um, oh, shoot. I, um, I like the idea of a traditional art piece for Larry, but there is a sculpture that is just outside the zoo of a gorilla in planes of steel. And uh, I thought we could do something really fascinating and marvelous and modern for Larry as a sculpture. This piece that's shown is actually at the Calgary Stampede, and it's called uh, From the Bow, and there's actually horses coming down a riverbank and going back up, and it's a cowboy that's leading horses, but uh, this is just a proposed possibility for discussion. Uh, next slide. Uh, Estella Wildman Scarlet has the same last name as me because she's my great-grandma. She named Innisfil in 1903, and um, when I started thinking about this slide, uh, I thought maybe a little bit narcissistic to name my family needing a sculpture, but um, there's a number of people in our family have been involved in all kinds of things in town. But I also thought that Estella kind of symbolized uh, women in leadership. Uh, I know that she was strong and that she had lots of ideas, um, but it made me think about being in the kitchen of the Newman house the second time that Pat Newman won the mayor's race. And I remember having the thought that like, oh, yeah, she's already mayor. She's mayor again. Women can be mayors. And it was the very first time I really thought about women in leadership. And I think I was just in junior high at the time. But uh, Estella Wildman Scarlet, I think, represents both those things, maybe just a, a family's past, but as well as uh, leadership in the community. Uh, next. So I was at a dinner party recently and uh, Jeannie Ladd asked what she was going to do with all those stupid hockey trophies at her place. <laughs> I said, I have a fantastic idea. Why don't we make an eagle with all the eagle ho hockey trophies that are around or the kids hockey trophies? And I thought, wouldn't that be a fun thing? I know that there's lots of kids that dream about being in the NHL, but in Innisfil, I think there's even more kids that dream about being an eagle. And uh, next slide. And this is just an idea for a public art piece that could be anywhere or could be storytelling. I believe this piece is in Florida at a, 
open pavilion that people uh, celebrate and have fun in, in the evening. So during the day, the cutouts would tell a story about an area, but in the nighttime, they provide some security and safety and, and a little bit of party lighting. And I think this would be a fun piece to have. There's so many stories that are here that are part of Innisfil. Um, okay, and the last slide. So a few things about this slide. Um, on the left is a drift horse, driftwood horse. Uh, I have dreamed about doing a driftwood cow, or maybe a herd of cows. Uh, given that I grew up on a dairy farm, I think cows are a really important part of, of where my life came from. Uh, I don't know if I'll start with maybe making one or seven for my yard when I find a spot to live. Um, but it's an example of pretty much a free piece of public art that could be fun and quirky and interesting for pe people to love. Uh, the middle, of course, is the coffee cottage uh, mural that I was lucky to be involved with last year. And on the right-hand side is a crocheted heart. Uh, I launched in the new year a crochet project that ho hoping that it would bring community together. And what's fascinating to me is that we've had a couple hundred downloads of our free pattern on, our, on the Innisil Art Club website. And it's included people downloading our pattern from California and Florida, Texas, Colorado, Arizona, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, all over Vancouver, right throughout BC and Alberta. Nobody in Manitoba has downloaded a pattern though, so I'm gonna have a bone to pick with those guys. Uh, we've decided on our installation date of June 3rd and we're hoping to create a party. Uh, many of you came out to help out with the mural last year and so I hope that you'll join in at the party in June when we install the hearts on the fence. Uh, more importantly than the sculptures that we could have, I think is the plan of how we create a good public art policy. I think that a public art policy has to be uh, inclusive of the community and not just mandated by the town. And so I would like to, to truly propose that a community organization that would include town leadership come together to create a strong art policy, including murals and sculpture and how we create that opportunity. There's so much more than just coming up with the idea, but how is our art taken care of? And how is it, um, how is it created? And who are the vendors that are involved? And what are the engineers? And all those working parts that go into creating um, great public art. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much, Karen, for coming today. Could I please have someone make the recommended motion? that uh, we accept the proposed public sculptural art in Innisfail presentation as information. I so move. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harrison. Any questions? <laughs> Councillor Dunham. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, thank you, Karen, for coming in and doing the presentation. It's been a pleasure to work on with you on a few different things and to get to know you over the last while. Um, when I was running for council, one of the things that uh, was part of my platform was increasing art and culture in the community. Um, arts and culture are something that are vital to a community to build on its capacity and to attract new people, not only individuals and families coming to um, a community in a town, but also businesses. It attracts, um, within site selectors, it's one of, one of the important pieces of that. So. I just want to say thank you for all this, putting this all together and wanting to be a part of it. Uh, I think it's important when our citizenry stands up and wants to help the community grow. And I think that's exactly what you're doing. So I commend you for that. And I, I look forward to us being able to participate with you in any, any way possible. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Wing. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, thanks, Karen, for your your great presentation. Uh, yeah, I feel as emotional and as uh, as significant about this as as what you've shown here. Um, just to build a little bit on what Con Councillor Dunham has said, um, public art is a great way to build public pride in a community as well. So yes, it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful reason for other people to come and learn about Innisfail and share what a great town this is. But um, from what I hear and what I see. 
uh, especially with youth and even a little bit older than youth, leading right up to the old people like me. Um, the thirst for knowledge about what, what has gone on in this community and what our history is um, beyond the historical village. We have a great treasure there for sure and to be able to enhance all of that with some um, really interesting art that tells great stories and recognizes great people is really important. So I commend you on that and I look forward to continuing to support it and work with you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Um, we administration has been in the process of developing an art policy over the last few months and uh, we also had a draft of a recognition policy a couple of weeks ago that we've sent back to administration for more work so maybe the best thing to do is to discuss with administration going forward where that's at and they will bring that policy back to council eventually and go from there so wonderful okay thank you for your time okay thank you made a few other pieces of art for the civic collection, the <coughs> Llewellyn's. Larry Robinson winning, I think Darlene, when is he winning in this picture? Do you know? NFR. This is Larry winning the NFR. I have stories about Larry from French 10 class, but we'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll save those for another day. <laughs> <laughs> and great grandma. So tried to make uh, historical images look a little bit funky and modern. And uh, my pleasure to thank you for making time for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will move on to um, 4.1 with CEO Becker, strategic priorities chart. Thanks, Mayor Barkley. Just to, uh, so council reviewed these uh, a few meetings ago. Um, so this, the strategic priorities chart will remain on your A&P agendas moving forward in similar fashion to your action control that you see at your regular council meetings. So you'll just see it. There won't be a cover report uh, with it. It's there to ask questions. Where are we at with priorities? Um, and uh, um, and then um, the, the priorities that come to you more formally um, at each quarter unless council is given direction to review the, the priorities. I'll just leave it. We'll just take a okay. moment till nobody wants to stay and listen to you. I don't. <laughs> oh, maybe Danny will. Maybe. <laughs> Do you want to move up to the front row? No? Okay, just checking. All right. Come sit up here. We have an empty chair. Yeah. So I'll start over, uh, Mayor and Council. But uh, so from this meeting moving forward, uh, unless Council directs otherwise, the strategic chart will remain um, on your AMP agenda uh, as an outstanding item. So you'll see this each time, but you'll see it in more detail, uh, report cover and everything on each quarter unless council directs administration to bring it back with detail at a forthcoming meeting. So you'll just see it, you can ask questions on updates, on the priorities, uh, and et cetera. Um, so as you notice in this chart, that it's already overdue. So we had a um, really an informal chat uh, with council regarding the economic development entity. We know that one will come off based on your, your direction. So towards the end of March, at the ANP meeting, you're gonna see this chart um, the way it is, but you're also gonna see a new chart um, for what we've heard of from you for priorities. And then you're gonna say, yes, this is a priority. No, I wanna see these priorities advance onto the chart and we'll take it back, modify it, come back to the next week at the formal council meeting for approval. Does that make sense? So you're gonna see this copy, which is, out, which is old, and you're gonna see a new draft of a priority chart and you're gonna say, that works or no, we need to adjust these priorities to fit, and that's your deliberation. And then you're gonna approve it at the next formal council meeting, regular council meeting. So, so but each meeting, you're gonna see something uh, that's outstanding, that's not, that's old, but, but don't, don't worry about it, it's coming off at your next formal review, which is slated for the end of March. I'll let that sink in for one second. Is that okay? Was it? 
unless council otherwise directs the administration. <laughs> <laughs> the disclaimer always has to come at the start and the end. But uh, that's what I would suggest to you, council, unless you have other ideas. But that's it's a system that seems to work. And um, um, again, it's your priorities as your as your direction. So I'll leave it at that, uh, Mayor Barkley, if there's any questions to, to that uh, procedure. Anyone have any questions? Okay, then I'll have somebody please make the recommended motion. Mayor Berkeley, I'll move the council approves and accepts the 2023 strategic priorities chart as information. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? No, all in favor? Okay, carried. And we will move on to uh, 4.2 with CEO Becker, letter of support from for Red Deer County. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayor Barkley. I'd like to get into more of a process to identify these letters. I know instead of putting them right into correspondence, we'll kind of put a spotlight on, uh, item on for you to review um, and to make a formal direction so it's on public record. So this letter has come to us through the county administration uh, looking for a letter of support from the town as part of their application to the Universal Broadband Fund for the Rural Fiber Optic Project. Um, I, so I just pulled a little bit of information off their website in relation to their project. Um, they'd probably be happy to provide additional information if you're seeking that information, but they're looking for a letter request as per this report. Okay, can I please have someone make the recommended motion? I would make that motion, Mayor Barkley, uh, that we authorize the CAO to provide Red Deer County a letter of support for their Rural Fiber Optic Project Universal Broadband Fund application. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Councillor Bates? Uh, just one that I have is, um, do we know the interface between where TELUS might have given us fiber, <coughs> fiber optics in town and, and where this might actually potentially service us? Like, I don't. Like, because it's been, what, five years since TELUS came in or more? So I got to assume that even at that time, there's probably fringe parts mm -hmm. of the community that weren't serviced with fiber optic. I don't know. Mayor Berkeley, the Council of Bates is 2016 ish, I'd say. Uh, I think TELUS came in, if I recall the agreement. Um, there's no. Red Deer line going in our vicinity at this time. Um, you know, they talk about Bowdoin, but um, I've not identified Bowdoin on, on their chart. But uh, so until there's a line going by, we, it, I'm not sure when that would be and how we'd utilize that locally. We have not conducted that research. Well, and, and I think Councillor Bates at the time, maybe you remember, but I, I think people could get fiber optic in town, but you could, not everybody chose to, right? oh, but but yeah. it's available. Like it's still available if you want to. Like I, I know at my other house, I didn't have it, but I could have got it, but chose not to. But so I, I think right now it's kind of Red Deer to Delburn was the first mm -hmm. initiative, first stage of this. Well, they do include our name when they say build to or past mm -hmm. all two incorporated towns, and I'm just assuming in that five years there's probably some edges of the town that weren't practical for TELUS that might be, no, I'm just curious as to, I don't know where TELUS stops in the town, like, did it get, does anybody know, did it get all of Woodland and did it get all of, I don't know. I don't know. We do have that map, um, yeah, not handy. Obviously, but um, yeah, that's probably another conversation yeah. on, on the TELUS. It doesn't network. impact, you know, us giving an author a, a support letter. I'm just saying, <clears throat> down the road, it may actually be an opportunity for some of our edges. Right. Yeah. Or Starlink. <laughs> yeah. um, just a quick question. The to through the mayor to CAO Becker, the rural or the. Yeah, the Rural Fiber Optic Project Universal Broadband Fund. Is that the, fe is that the federal government? It is, So this yes. is the application yeah. that they talked to us about when we had our meeting with them and that they said they had uh, acted on two years ago. They'd applied for two years ago. 
That is correct. Yeah. Uh, Berkeley Council Wing, uh, this is kind of going back. Uh, now they, they require support letters, but they've already um, made the application. I'm not even sure if they're accessing that funding yet, but it's uh, that process has uh, come and gone quite some time ago, um, but, but they now need uh, letters of support. Yeah, they haven't actually been approved, so they haven't spent any of it. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion. Um, any further questions? All in, all in favor of support? Okay, carried. Okay, and we will move to 4.3, Director Vickers with Urban Hens. Yes, thank you, Mayor Barkley. So our Urban Hen uh, pilot program is coming up to an end. It is scheduled to end um, by the end of April of this year, because um, it did start on May 1st in 2021, and it was just a two-year pilot program. Um, so it did regulate and control the keeping of urban hens within the town of Innisfil, and as of April 30th, it will come in to, to an end. So we are going to do a review of the program uh, and bring those findings uh, to council to see if council would like to make it a permanent program uh, or if the pilot project was enough and, and we're done. Um, so we did come up with some steps that uh, we were going to do to do the um, review uh, and we did put them here. So uh, the first review we were going to talk about number of license purchased, uh, feedback from license holders. So as soon as this gets approved by council we will send uh, letters to the current license holders of the program um, advising them of the end date and council's timeline to assess the program and offer them the opportunity to provide their feedback about the program in writing. We'll also ask for feedback from just the general public. Uh, we'll advise our program review uh, through our social media uh, channels, as well as in the paper and potentially in the uh, utility insert, and ask any residents to submit any comments or concerns they may have on the program in writing so that that may also be able to uh, be presented to council. Um, any complaints uh, that we have received in the past two years from municipal uh, enforcement, sorry. Uh, any inquiries received in 2023 from interested participants uh, since January 1st this year, we've already received six inquiries about this program, uh, as well as any other programs that we currently have in place like our animal programs for dogs and cats. Yeah, so we are looking for feedback from council to see if this is an appropriate level of review for this program to see if you'd like to continue on. Um, and then I did just want to note that should that we not implement a full-fledged urban hen program. They, the t current participants will have 90 days to rehome their, their chickens after May 1st. So I'll take any comments or questions or any feedback on, on this okay. review. Thank you, Director Vickers. Do you know offhand how many um, pilots there are right now? So we do have two okay. license holders. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mayor Barkley one. through to Director Vickers. So those two, then can just continue on until they're told they can't basically they're able to restock their hen houses this spring right. in, in the, while this process is going on yeah maybe okay. through to council wing so yeah so once you're approved for a license that won't get taken away you would get to automatically renew your license going forward and ma manage it year after year yeah. councillor bates well and I, <clears throat> I assume that it's not a go no go you might modify it Absolutely, yeah, based on, on the results uh, of this review, uh, we'll bring it forward to council and, and with our suggestions and then you guys can make your decision. So I, I did personally have some, some complaints, I'll say, from the public and I think your item, your, your review process will give them certainly the opportunity to provide that feedback, particularly item three, so mm -hmm. it works for me. Okay. Councillor Harrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barclay, through to the director. Um, this is a good roadmap. It's a good start. Mm -hmm. And I think we need this information before we can go any further mm -hmm. uh, to understand what the program has done over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a good start. Okay. Good. okay, I'll have somebody please make a motion that we accept this as information. Councillor I so Harrison. move, Mayor Barclay. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harrison. All in favor? <laughs> we'll move into 5.1 correspondence and information. <laughs> so 
also um, believe uh, Councillor Bates and I are going to be at the Fish and Game Banquet. If anybody else would like to go, please let us know soon. And I'll just have somebody accept this as information, please. Councillor Dunham. Mayor Barclay, I will do that. Thank okay. you. All in favor? Okay, thank you. And we will move into round table. Councillor, council committee reports. Sorry, I have a hard time saying that. And we'll start with Councillor Wing today. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, last week was relatively quiet. Uh, the chamber board continues to work and move ahead. Um, big planning going on currently for the trade show at the end of March, so be sure that's on your calendars. That's going to be lots of fun. The week ahead brings MPC tomorrow and the Parkland Library Board meeting on Thursday. And um, further to our delegation this weekend, I will sit with a much-loved aunt and refresh my crocheting skills so I might contribute to the hearts installation. Okay, thank you. Councillor Harrison. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Barkley. Uh, yes, uh, again, a very uh, relatively quiet week. I did get out a little bit on the weekend here for, for Family Day and uh, enjoyed to see everybody out at the different different functions. Uh, so that's about all I did this past week. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dunham. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Uh, nothing relatively quiet about mine. Mine was absolutely quiet. So it's unfortunately, uh, yeah, come, going forward, there's some things happening, but last week was... Nothing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bates. <clears throat> Probably the quietest week of this term. Um, for me, last week, um, really just personal family stuff. Uh, this week, MPC for me, and I think that's all. Okay, thank you. And uh, last week, um, did a couple of business visits, one to Jackson's Pharmacy and also 2020 Auto. Had a Cape board meeting as well as a Red South Red Deer Regional Wastewater Commission meeting. And it looks like that tender may be going out in April for the, the new pond. And um, so they're working with Director Kennedy on that, of course. Um, this week, I uh, have South Central and Central Mayor's Group meeting on Wednesday evening and uh, Cape meeting later this week. And uh, yeah, a couple other things, but we will move on to upcoming events, please. It's a long list. And just have somebody make a motion that we accept this as information, please. Mayor Barkley, I would make that motion. Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. And then we'll have a motion to go in camera. Mayor Barkley, I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Okay, carried. Thank you.